won't hear him say it, but Matt Frost is kind of a big deal. He uses his insight to advocate for the 40,000 New Zealanders that live with autism. What is, what is normal? Well, who examines that and how? People's normal changes, you know? I think there is some fantastic things about being autistic. My role is Research and Policy Analyst for Autism New Zealand. Things need to change for people with autism. They should have the same rights and choices as other New Zealanders. The right to have employment, the right to have good educational outcomes, and good quality lives. I think about the potential that, you know, the 40,000 people that, who have autism um, can exhibit if we give people uh, a chance to really shine, um, and that's what drives me to do what I do. What's autism? Autism is a complex impairment which has kind of three main parts to it. People have um, difficulty with understanding social behaviour, communication skills can be impaired, um, and the third element of autism is difficulty with behaving flexibly. So people with autism like routine, they like structure. You shouldn't think that just because you've met some one person with autism, um, you understand the, uh, the condition, because it's really, really complex. What I would have, would have appreciated, and this is gonna sound really strange, is, you know, a kind of instruction manual on life. Because the social stuff didn't come naturally to me, um, I remember lots of times where I misread social situations and, and what that taught me was to be careful. Sometimes I get that, sometimes I get that right um, and sometimes I get it spectacularly wrong. Meeting with Catherine Delahunty and Holly Walker from the Greens around access for disabled people to the election. you come up and you just say, look, actually, I am autistic, mm. does that stop the conversation? That's why MMP is important, mm. because otherwise we don't get diversity and we don't learn. But what? I think we can allow The meeting with, say, Holly and Catherine, I am myself, you know, because advocacy and work is a large part of my life, but I'm also conscious that it's a very formal context. Some of the most uh, insightful people I've met <laughs> actually have intellect. And that the people that I'm talking to have the ability to make key decisions around lots and lots of people who I represent. Yeah. I've learned that actually part of conversation is turn taking. And I had to I had to learn that. So that didn't come naturally to me. So when I was younger. You know, and one of the things about autism is we have what we call special fields of interest, which is um, we have things that we are really passionate about. And if you had sat down with me as an eight or nine year old, um, our conversation would not have been a conversation. Our conversation would have been, Matt would have told you for, you know, I don't know, as long as you were prepared to sit here with me um, about, you know, parliament or about, you know, history or about whatever. Um, until such time as you actually got, you know, thoroughly sick of me, and and I would not. Have, glazed over yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 I would not have picked up that cue. I would have mm. just gone. Mm -hmm. um, and and you know, I would have thought that you were thoroughly interested in it until such time <laughs> as you actually got up and got went. And, and look, that happened to me. If you'd if you'd started talking to me about things that interested you. <laughs> Well, actually, Tony, I'm not interested in that at all. I'm sorry, and, and you know... You would have just said that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, probably. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So when did it start to hit you that you were sort of looking at other people and thinking, oh, actually, I'm a little bit different? I remember um, saying at one party, oh, you know, this is very interesting from a kind of sociological perspective, you know? And actually, <laughs> and actually, that's not the sort of thing you say at 16, <laughs> right? I mean, the only other time that I can think of where it really hit me that I was 
quite different was when I was bullied at intermediate school. Um, and that gave me a lot, lot, has given me a lifelong kind of dislike and abhorrence of bullying. I really think that bullying behaviour is not okay. I find the behaviour of what we call neurologically typical people really, really fascinating and interesting, but also sometimes really strange. Well, I'm just looking through the um, women's magazines, um, which is something I do most weeks. It's, a, it's an interesting kind of social, social experiment, I suppose, and interesting socially to see, you know, what uh, what ordinary people are interested, you know, people who are neurotypical are interested in, and it's quite helpful for me to have a kind of context so that I can, you know, have something I can talk about with, you know, my colleagues. Oh boy. Katy Perry, what are you doing? Um, but on another level, I'm thinking, well, uh, some of the behaviour is so, so bizarre that I just think, why would I be interested in that? You know, like, why am I interested that Kate, that Kate and Mike have just adopted? You kind of pick that up and you think, okay, have they adopted a kid? Have they, you know? And if you find that actually they've written four pages about their dog that they've just adopted, which is, you know, nice for them, but it's like, well, actually, why, why am I interested and why do I care? <coughs> you know, I mean, it's important to them, but it does, it's not necessarily important to me. I find that uh, often, you know, loud, close noise can be really challenging, so I find that, you know, if I'm crossing the street, that can be sometimes really challenging because I have to judge space and depth and that's something that I struggle with. Also, um, physically, my hand-eye coordination is not very good. So I'm never going to be a top sp sports person <laughs> um, or, you know, um, do things that require uh, lots of dexterity. Sorry about this. I find that with um, hand-eye coordination stuff that I have, um, things like, you know, putting on my uh, tie, you know, because you have to do your top button up, um, can be quite challenging because it's quite dexterous to, you know, because you've got a small, small um, button and you need to put it in the hole. Um, but I've found that in order to do what I do in terms of advocacy, you kind of have to do that stuff. You have to, like, I mean, you, it, it would look odd if you didn't go to Parliament without a tie on. Um, but, you know, I mean, it, in my, pre my preference would be that I didn't have to do it, but I do, and that's kind of just part of life, really. Um, but it's those sort of things that I guess I, I find the most challenging, it's not the thinking stuff in my role that's hard, but it's the kind of preparation and making myself look good and, you know, being the professional that I want to be. Just a little. Good morning. I struggled to tie my shoelaces until I was 10. And my handwriting was absolutely shocking. On one level, I would be reading encyclopedias and have a huge amount of, you know, knowledge and I could transmit that orally and, you know, and sometimes that was, that was inappropriate too, you know, at eight, nine, 10. I'll let you go. Not a problem. Right. How's your week?
we can. I see that my community needs support. And that is stuff like just an acknowledgement that, hey, kids at three, when they're diagnosed with autism, should be able to get comprehensive support like I had. They should be able to go to school like I was able to go to school. They should be able to go to work like I'm able to go to work. And they should be able to enjoy the richness of life. Um, we're meeting Autism New Zealanders meeting with Grant Robertson, who is the Labour Health spokesperson, um, and we're meeting with him mainly to introduce him to um, issues around health needs for people with ASD and their families. Questions to MPs. I haven't heard back from any of them. From none of them? Yeah. Okay, so, so I need to do some chase up and I'm happy to do some chase up today. Did we give them a, a timeline for, to come back for us all? Yeah, we did. With meetings like this, there's always a bit of nerves. <laughs> um, you know, when you're meeting with MPs, uh, you can't go in too cocky or confidently. But I think that the thing about meetings like this is that we know you know, we have a good context and good knowledge about what we know around autism. And people genuinely want to work with us. Good to see you. Well, I'm very well, thank you. Weather. Yeah, yeah, well, well the weather, you know. Good. Yeah, good. absolutely. It always comes back to things like, can I access employment? Mm -hmm. Can I, you know, if I go to a work and income office, will I be, you know, accepted? I read some research just recently from the um, National Autistic Society that said, you know, that 30% of people were either not employed and, it's a kind of a, not an or, it's an yeah. and, and not on benefit support. Yeah. Now, in terms of your I suppose if we come back to health, I mean, if you are in a situation where you don't know where your income is coming from, you aren't in employment, but you know you have fantastic skills, um, what do you do with that? Yeah. We've got several levels of problems, and one of them is trying to draw the different agencies together. We have 40,000 people um, with autism in New Zealand, and the thing about autism for me is, firstly, awareness. Um, you know, it's, it's a relatively new um, condition. It's, um, autism was first um, discovered, diagnosed 60 years ago. There have been people with autism throughout history. We just haven't recognised it as such. So you can have everybody from quirky, you know, Bill Gates or Matt Frost, um, right through to somebody who might have some really, really complex behaviour. <laughs> Um, occasionally, I will have what's known as meltdowns. Um, so they're kind of they're kind of physical ways of showing that I'm not coping. That happens very occasionally now. That I just had to I just had to sit down. Like I just and I was just like my head is like spinning. Really, not I mean not literally, but it's kind of like. Oh my gosh, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't fathom this. I really, really do not want to be here. And, and actually, you will, if people watch me closely, they will see me physically just go, oh, oh, oh. And, and I just kind of have to withdraw. It is tiring and challenging kind of engaging with the social world. I like to hope that home is, can be a safe space around that stuff. 
doing what I do, people would say it's quite extraordinary. You know, you know, you go and meet with politicians and you go and meet with officials and you know, you you, you do that stuff. That's actually incredibly tiring. Keep your breath or anybody else to be wrecking the environment. It's not a miracle because they want to be successful. They want to be able to extract and produce in a cost-effective way, and it's not in their interest to be creating environmental damage or to be getting offside with with citizens of the country in which they are operating. Mm -hmm. Also on another level, home is where some of my biggest challenges are. Cleaning my house can be challenging, cooking can be challenging. So for me, there's also a sense of I can never leave autism behind. I'm manager of the Karori Cricket Club, um, senior side, and we, um, we're having our prize giving here tonight. I think what I really enjoy about cricket is it's, it, it's like chess on grass. Well, do you know, I know that the first test match ever played was played between Australia and England and Melbourne in 1877. In the um, 1784 was when the first um, code of laws was developed um, for cricket. I also know that Sir so Don Bradman, he had to score four runs in his last test match to have a perfect 100 average, and he was bowled out for a duck. Traditionally, we've called them autistic obsessions. They're kind of two or three special things that, that keep autistic people going. Is, uh, is Gail's told you about a six? No, we'll go have, on. We'll have to ask him about it, mate. First ever. First ever? <laughs> no. Second. Second, okay, right. Yes, I know quite a bit about cricket, but, you know, there are lots of other people in the sport who maybe don't have autism, who know lots about it. And, and for me, that's really, really good and really comfortable. Yeah. I mean, that was I'll tell you later. I'll be really open and honest about, about my mental well-being. Sometimes I have not been particularly mentally well and I'm aware that that will be a continual challenge and an and interesting state for me for the rest of my life. I have a vision, particular way that I would like to see the world being and sometimes it can be really hard to see society actually not fulfilling its potential, actually. Well, I am Matt's aunt. The ironing gets done once a week and um, I go upstairs and just help him out with the washing and the cleaning and he also comes down at least once or twice a week and I actually cook him a meal.
And there are some times when I wish I could invite a government minister and say, you know, come, come round and, you know, see how hard it can be. Um, and then tell me that actually you cannot give, you can't give people with high-functioning autism support. Oh, please, I'm so, so sick of... OK, Matt, what do you got on here? Uh, use a couple of shirts, couple Oh, of OK, well, you can do... Yep, right. I can just show you. OK. Oh, this is inside out, so... Um, I mean, I rely on Philippa a lot for, you know, assistance with just kind of the practical stuff. But also, I mean, we have a lot of fun, eh? We oh, of fun absolutely. And, you know, we, we poke the borax at one another. Well, well, you know, <laughs> after a fashion. It, it's interesting. I mean, I, I think about other stuff as well. Like, I think about yeah. the practical stuff. Like, first day here, you went with me on the bus. You know, oh, and kind of that's took me through, right, took me through yes. that stuff. Well, I think the first real major test was 9-11. Yeah. And so I rang him up mm. and we had a conversation and I thought, well, I actually thought that I'd dealt with it. And then Matt came into my workplace in a very distressed state yeah. and um, I had to stop what I was doing and spend a good couple of hours just talking through what had happened and why it happens yeah. and what because you couldn't understand how something so evil could happen yeah. and and you were actually i th to be honest with you matt you were actually in tears i mean i i, I knew abstractly what was going on but i'm yeah. not sure i fully you know the emotional stuff it kind of runs away with you and i think that we actually dealt with it quite well because we actually talked about it for a long time so how you been <laughs> Busy. Busy. <laughs> right. I have a really good relationship with my brother and sister. My sister um, told me just recently, when I was deputy head boy of um, Boys College, you know, 900 boys, um, she used to get teased about the fact that, you know, Matt was a bit strange and, you know, Matt had autism and, you know, and, and, and she didn't tell me that at the time, obviously. I've got to be honest and say that's sad for me because I feel I feel sad about that in terms of my brother and sister. But I think if they were in the room, they would say, "Well, look, actually, Matt, it's okay." Right. Um, I think one of the things is, is that we're all completely different. Like we all work in the public sector, mm. um, but we've all kind of got different interests. Helen's like the computer nerd. I spend too much money on clothes and going out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, like, I think we're just kind of close and we just embrace each other's differences and, you know, we can... I kind of works for us, really. Yeah, it's absolutely. a bit different. I think it's a little similar. We'd probably drive each other more. Yeah, yeah. So probably one of our earliest memories of Maddie was um, Maddie with his nose in a book all the time. Yeah, falling asleep with his nose in a book. Um, but... You know, it was kind of always the choice of books as well. Like, it wasn't your standard three investigators' mystery stories like <laughs> I was reading. Um, it was more history. And politics and, and the royal family. And we still have a massive collection of Maddie's royal family uh, books at yeah. home. Well, not only books, <laughs> but a lot of other stuff. But he did get to meet the Queen. So and he was, was on Woman's Day. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. that. I was on Woman's Day, yeah. <laughs> we try and help Maddie out where we recognise that there are limitations, but where Maddie may not have seen those limitations. Yeah. So, like, little things like make, making sure he does have plenty of food and stuff in the fridge and um, things like ironing and that type of... the kind of practical stuff that most people just take for granted. Because it's not high up on his list of priorities, so we kind of help him out in those practical ways. Yeah. So, like, so all of those things. I understand why that's not a priority. Yeah. <laughs> compared to meeting with MPs. And just... <laughs> Hello. People are looking for me? Hello, John. Everyone's going to be looking for me. Everyone's looking for me, yeah, yeah, I think so. Hello. Okay. Hello. You know, yes, I have, you know, two or three film crews in front of me. Slightly nervous because I'm emceeing this crowd. Oh, very, very nice indeed. <laughs> yes, Frank Casey. Oh, but, but, oh yeah. As the guy with autism, it's a little bit kind of, you know, oh my gosh, but you know, hey. We're, we're still evolving um, our knowledge and expertise around how, how we work with people with autism and um, 
the expertise that we need to do that. Good, good evening, everyone. Gosh. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you very, very much indeed. Um, we are your MCs for tonight. Um, my name is Matt. I'd like to hope that we could get to uh, a society in a place where actually Matt, but other people like Matt, can, can be just who they are and that we provide an environment where, where that is just OK. Uh, with the people that I meet um, and, um, and their families, they have lots of potential. Um, four months old, you know, and it seems to me that if we're not, if we're not committed to change, then we'll waste that potential. Impressive stuff. Matt's currently on the prestigious B Leadership course. I think we're going to be hearing a lot more from him in the future. Dana, Travis, Susan and Richard are all adults. And while they each have an intellectual disability, they want to go flatting. They want to choose where they live and who they live with. But it's not going to be as simple as it sounds. I've come to the stage now that I am demanding a meeting every Thursday morning because we've got to progress from where we are now. I am so proud to win this award. We're down to our final two weeks before nominations close for this year's Attitude Awards. You'll agree that tonight's celebration is a truly worthwhile recipient. We're celebrating the achievements of Kiwis living with a disability. They're an outstanding bunch of guys. And we need you to think about who deserves recognition. Check out our website for details. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.